What is going on guys? Last week, like every month, we got our monthly Ashes of Creation development update in the form of a live stream, giving us updates on the game leading up to Alpha 1, housing, work in progress gear, and mounts, and much more. I'm a little late on this video this week as I was out of town all weekend, but we're doing it anyways. Starting off, we know that Phoenix Initiative pre-alpha testing has been going on, and apparently it has been going pretty good. Overall, the game itself is pretty stable, all except for a caravan issue they had, but that's what these tests are for. That way, when tons of people jump into Alpha 1, the game won't completely break, it will only slightly break. But, what's an Alpha without breaking something to begin with? Anyways, Intrepid let us know that Alpha 1 is still on track for a fall launch, so only a few months more to wait for those of us whom were able to purchase a backer package and get into Alpha Alpha 1 testing. Moving on to housing, we got some new gameplay of static housing inside a stage 3 Empyrean node, showing us some of that elven architecture in the game, including a fully furnished house. Although when purchasing houses in the final game, they won't have any furniture in them that will have to be crafted or purchased from other players. But anyways, if you look back into the alpha gameplay Steven released last month, you may have noticed when purchasing a home, a bunch of icons popped up that were never really explained. Well, in the newest video, they are. And these tell us some of the amenities this particular house has. These being a storage allowance. This works by the player actually creating storage chests for their houses, but only certain houses can have certain things. So presumably you won't be able to have max storage in most basic houses. A furniture option, as houses can only have so much furniture placed in them. So unfortunately you won't be able to host that Ashes of Creation Hoarder episode. Then there is the icon listing whether or not the house itself is sellable. This is important because real estate in Ashes of Creation is a thing. The price of the house is based off the number of people in that node. The higher the population, the more competition for a house and the more it will cost. So you could buy a house in the early stages of a node for cheaper and then sell it at some point in the future and set your own price based off the demand in that node and turn a profit. If there are multiple people competing over a house, well, it isn't finalized how this will work out come launch, but Intrepid is thinking of a potential bidding system where the highest bid ends up getting the house. Then there is an icon for gatherable areas, meaning that within this house there is an area for you to grow specific gatherables. Housing will have a big part on crafting, particularly with the ability to grow certain items, but you will also be able to create craft specific furniture such as crafting benches to help out whatever artisan skills you may want to dive into. Then there is an icon stating whether or not the house is destructible. Unfortunately, sieges of nodes will happen and your house may get destroyed. But you won't lose any decorations you have placed because those will be mailed to you if for some reason it gets destroyed. The last icon shows you the size of the house. Houses do have the opportunity to be upgraded as a node develops, but aren't forced. If you like your small house and don't want it to be upgraded to a larger house when the node upgrades, then that is fine. There is an option you can pick so this doesn't happen. Two people do not have the option to own the same house in Ashes of Creation, but the game will have a permission based system where you can invite members to join and interact with your house on a per item basis. For example, you can allow players to do things such as interact with doors so they can get into your house or deposit or withdraw items from your storage chest or even give them the ability to place furniture and decorations in the house for you. There is a lot more to housing and I did another video on it last week that you could check out in the description below if you want to learn more. Moving on from housing, we get a look at a new hair cosmetic. If you look at the faces, they are greatly improving from those faces we initially saw in Apocalypse. They look amazing and the detail in them will have these characters looking very realistic running around Vera. We also got a bit of showing off how armor is built going from concept to the high resolution sculpt and the low resolution sculpt, the material breakup and the final in-game render of these items. This is not one set that you buy. Every piece of gear will be individually obtained and they are being designed so that your character won't look too weird if you choose to mix and match armor from different sets. Intrepid has the ability to change the textures, colors, and more to the gear, making them look radically different while essentially they are the same bones to the set so they don't look too off when you mix them together. Moving on, we got a look at some creatures in the game, such as the Ramstone Hauler. You can see this Dunir Caravan, which was a cosmetic from one of the backer packages back in 2018. You can see that the devs at Intrepid do a fantastic job 
bringing these pieces from concept to render, while maintaining the majority of the look in their game. We then see the Watcher of the Woods model, which again was part of a backer package in 2018. This guy looks like a cross between a cat and an owl, and in game he will be a smaller pet as his body is about the size of two character heads. And then we have the Luminous Starcrawler, which was from a backer package back in January of this year. This little guy is once again a pet cosmetic skin that anyone who purchased this package will have in the game. And then we have the best looking turtle mount I have ever seen in my life. The Shell of the Ancients was once again a 2018 backer package and I'm really disappointed I missed out on this guy as he looks absolutely phenomenal. The detail in this guy is amazing and they haven't even added the visual effects of the mount onto him yet. Last we have a goblin work in progress, he's not quite complete yet as you can tell but this guy looks pretty intimidating. Intrepid took a less traditional take on these guys from other games and made them a bit more darker and monstrous. Currently he is in a T-pose and has yet to get his stances in animation, we can expect him to be in a more crouched position. Like many creatures in the world there will be multiple variants of these guys as well. And to end the live stream like all others, we had the Q&A. Other than a few housing questions asked in the stream that I answered earlier in the video, Video, I'm not going to go through all of these as I'd rather group them up into certain topics and give you guys a video with a lot more detail on each subject. But that being said, the link for the full live stream is in the description below. What is your favorite part of this live stream? Let me know in the comments below and as always be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up and stay tuned for a lot more to come.